You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So guys, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? I took a little break from watching a little Southern Gothic horror movie called that was a Dark Night of the Scarecrow. Just uh, taking a little taking a little break to create a little video for you guys. Anyway, let's jump right back in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Okay, <clears throat> all right, okay. And considering I've done, I've just done the laundry, I don't think the intruder could sniff anything of significance relating to me, so I sigh in relief. Once we arrive back at the table, the conversation about Regera's pack continues in earnest. I notice Vool is listening intently, with an owl leaned over onto his shoulder, sleeping. It's actually quite cute how the black male seems to not mind her one bit. I wonder if she's faking it again. So how many wolves in total did you get? With Darwin's four? Eleven. Only three escaped. So you decimated two neighboring packs. Dran pitches in with a scolding tone in his voice. Again, wouldn't have to do any decimating if they weren't here to begin with. The female states sternly and many, many nod in agreement, including Rannick as we take our seats. Besides, she pauses, reluctant to proceed, but the chief encourages her. What is it? I don't want to sound crazy, but they didn't seem to be packs at all. What do you mean? The male tilts his head in confusion as the female tries to collect her thoughts. They didn't have rangers with them, scouts, nor any typical pack structure. Just regular warriors, some quite heavily armed. Heavily armed? Fully plated. In fact, the walking ten wolf seemed to be a, seemed to be a foreign extraction. A foreign extraction? Are you tr what are you trying to say, girl? The pudgy elder, the elder throws in impatiently. They weren't Avalon wolves. The language sounded funny. You mean to say the Vortigern brought in wolves from across the sea? She shrugs awkwardly. Again, not claiming to be an expert on the matter, but that's what it looked like to me. If Vortigern is making overtures f towards the Wolven Horde, this is indeed troubling. And that would explain his underhanded use of diplomatic immunity. The chief scoffs in the direction of the crumpled piece of paper, which lies where it landed. So, he's hired a group of mercenaries. What of it? Aldra sneers, crossing her arms and leaning back in her seat like a petulant child. And what if those aren't just mercenaries? What if he brought their experts to train his wolves in the art of warfare? What if he's reorganizing his tribe into a proper army? Are you suggesting our army is not proper? The female raises her voice, intentionally drawing attention from the neighboring tables and stirring murmurs among the gathered. With the stakes this high, it's not like others were ignoring the conversation up to this point, but this little stunt made them pay attention twofold. The chief takes note of that and takes a deep breath, weighing his words carefully. I am suggesting that we've been following an outdated dogma that prevented progress. Our troops are more suited for guerrilla warfare limited to these woods alone. We don't stand a chance facing a regular army. Not like the one not like the one wolves feel not like the one wolves field across the sea. We stood against Tigaron when you weren't even born. I lived through it. Audrey states proudly, pushing her sausage like fingers deep into her chest, but there but the chief remained silent, taking a moment to stand up. Aye, and I've heard the many the stories many times, just as any other wolf did. All six tribes united, tens of thousands of wolves lost to a single battle mage with barely a handful of troops at his command. He takes a deep breath from his chalice. If it wasn't war, it was a joke. Tigaron didn't even bother to send in their real army. Our ancestors fought valiantly, the female snarls, stomping in anger, again trying to make a spectacle so that everyone pays careful attention to what's being said. The feasting ground goes quiet like a graveyard. More than a hundred wolves seated, and you could hear a pin drop. The chief takes another deep breath and smiles at the inciting female. Aye, they fought valiantly, they fought bravely, and the tigers made a picnic on their graves. If Vortigern is mobilizing, it means he's, it means he's making plans much bigger than just a border skirmish. What's worse, this is not going to look mighty. This is not going to look mighty well in the capital. The sorcerer king is not going to take lightly to one of our own treating the wolven horde just as. The, just as their war is concluded. Bithyr leans in, refilling his friend's cup. Those damn dire wolves are trying to open up back door to Tigaron and use us as their cannon fodder. You may dislike all you may dislike me all you like, Aldris, but even you must see where this is headed. We retained our sovereignty at the Sorcerer King's whim. We preserved it by blood and steel He shouts out, but this time the chief had enough. At the Sorcerer King's whim! 
he roars, slamming his goblet against the table and sending wine cascading every which way. Everyone's frozen in place as his rattled breath echoed across the grounds, until Vithyr places a paw on his friend's shoulder and brings him, brings him down to his seat. He calmly replenishes Varric's cup again and gives the old female an aggravated look. We're just, we're just his pen stroke away from losing everything we own. You do understand that, right? Of course, she doesn't. Never, She's never been outside the Moondam Forest. The chief sneers through his drink and clenched teeth. Yes, but he was. Vithyr nods to Dran. You've been, you've been yes mamming her drivel your entire life. Perhaps now it's time you grow a pair and speak some sense into that woman. Aldris snarls at the brown male, while Aldris fidgets nervously. You've been out there in the real world. Tell her where, where do we feature on every map. I... The old male tries to gather his courage, but falters until the female gives him a penetrating look. He's right. As far as everyone's concerned, we're part of Tigaron. So you see... We're here, left to our own devices, because the tigers don't care. At first, it seems that they're finally getting through to her, as she listens intently to what the chief has to say. I need you to understand how important it is that they continue to not care. Because if we make them care, then everything your precious ancestors ever worked for, everything you've ever claimed to strive for, will become undone within the blink of an eye. Be they mercenaries or advisors, if Vortigern invited wolves from Euron to his court, it'll be seen as an insult in the capital. But all her clan calm was an illusion. It appears she was simply waiting for another slip of the tongue to get hanged over. I see that the time you spent with the tigers rubbed off on you. To call that Tiggery city in such a manner. It is the capital. Whether you like it or not, the heart of Avalon beats in Tigeron. The chief snorts as if he were addressing a naive pup. The Lynxian, the Panthery, the Ankari, and the Felinians all pledged their allegiance to the alliance of Tigeron. Even the damned huskies and human jarldoms cooperate with them. Vithyr, and Vithyr reinforces the point, canning all the different species on his fingers. If Vortigern starts something foolish, we will have the entire continent on our head. Yes, yes, not the first time I've heard a doomsayer spin his tail. But as always, Aldris is not receptive. You mean, how would a single tribe start a war with Tigeron? It wouldn't. The chief shrugs, catching her by surprise and drawing everyone's attention back to the exchange. Vortigern is smart, ambitious, and above all, patient. Never liked the git. Always been a grubby wolf. He's more of your he's more of your persuasion. He nods to the pudgy female. Always stuck me as a petty little schemer. But we ought to give credit where credit's due. He always got what he wanted one way or another. Not unlike your friend over there and his father before him. Even their methods seem mighty similar. Aldris deflects, and a slight gasp could be heard from amongst the gathered. Vithyr looks at his friend with worry as the chief's lips curve up to reveal his fangs, but no outburst comes forth. Even Rannick is clearly unsettled, and it seems that the comments hold a deeper meaning than is completely that is completely lost on me. Be it as it may, it is clear that the throne of, G of Goldurin was not the end of Vertigern's ambitions. The brown wolf seizes the opportunity to return the conversation on track. If he's probing our borders, it means he's getting ready to make his bid. A bid for what? For Tiernan. And not just our tribe, but the entire damned forest. For man went all the way to Arden. He states plainly, taking a shallow sip and drawing a few murmurs from the surrounding tables. Otters takes a careful look over the gathering and simply laughs it off. This is absurd! The Wolven Horde just concluded a very costly and humiliating peace with the Empire of Leoness the Goldmane Kingdom, and the Alliance of Tigeron. Why would they waste their resources now in a backwater on the other side of the world? He poses a rhetorical question, and when Aldris cannot provide an answer, the chief simply picks up for her. Indeed. They must have had assurances. And the only thing enticing enough I could imagine is the unification of our people under their banner, to create another front in their enemy's backyard. This is all nonsense. But you female exhales in amusement, shaking her head. You two are drunk with power and high on epic tales of old. She speaks mockingly. Using her still looks like a stage for her oratory skills. You talk, uh, you talk as if our brothers from across the sea planned a worldwide conflict. What was the last one but a world war? Vithyr proposes another question, this time without any levity in his voice. From the, de from the deserts of Kimmet through the Persian and Ross Musavoy, all the way to the Ursa Highlands. They engulfed all three continents in their war. Not once, but three times over, and that's just in the last century alone. He emphasizes with a slightly risen voice. 
If you act like a mad dog, you'll be treated like one. And I'm no, and I'm no brothers with savage beasts about to be put down. This is so-called, this so-called wolven horde has managed to unite every single otherkin in this world against them. They've given canines a bad name, the chief recounts. Not only that, they've abandoned Aluna herself. They've burned down their sacred groves and turned to their perverse magics. He adds with no hidden disgust in his voice. If half of what the other can say about them is true, he pauses, clearly struggling to understand Aldridge's point of view, how is it that their sudden involvement with our northern neighbor does not unsettle you? This is all just hearsay based on the word of this pup. Aldridge tries to sound confident, but it's clear her composure is wavering. As usual, when running out of argument, she resorts to the dumbest of insults. Regera is thrice her size. She's no pup. And the irony doesn't seem lost on Vithyr and the Chief. She's the daughter of the best smith this side of the woods. If she says there, if she says there were foreign steel, I'm willing to bet my life on it. We really need a convoy to convey a how and pray it isn't too late. The Chief waves his paw dismissively, clearly losing patience with his quibbling. Dron. He addresses the old male with, almost ple with an almost pleading expression. For the first time, I see the old wolf clearly torn and almost unsettled, casting nervous gazes between his defiant companion and the chief. Your son, your only son is out there fighting. Moon knows what odds. Surely you don't mean to leave his hardships unanswered. I, I, I wouldn't. He tries to muster the courage to speak, but the vile woman cuts him off. Dran knows his place in the tribe, and so does Delrin. We're not swayed by petty sentiments, unlike the two of you. To us, the good of the tribe is of paramount importance. Which tribe, I begin to wonder. Pythir mutters in a harsh, cold tone, taking a sip of wine, while the female can barely collect herself. But it doesn't take long for her to blow a gasket and start howling like the mad bitch she is. How dare you! I gave my entire life for our people! Not successfully, obviously. <laughs> Some tried much harder than you at your behest. The entire force is filled with name trees of those who made the ultimate sacrifice. So don't you dare go telling me what you gave up for the tribe. Brown male sneers, but the chief has clearly had enough and once again waves his paw impatiently. I'd say we're getting nowhere here. I'll give you two a moment to discuss this amongst yourself, but come midnight, we shall vote whether or not to invoke a howl. He raises from, rises from, raises from his seat and everyone gets up, apart from Vool, who tries to nudge an from her sleep. No, don't. Better rest. The wreath, the wreath won't fall from my head just because you're seated. Come, I want to talk with you. The old male looks back to my wolf and nods in the direction of the forest. Rannick helps me to my feet, but the chief sneers in annoyance. Let the damn monkey be. Nothing's going to happen to him in the span of just a few moments. The gray wolf looks at me with worry, but I shrug at him with a reassuring smile. I'm going to be just fine. Whatever's going on is much more important. With the chief and Rannick taking their leave, everyone slowly disperses, and their grounds resemble what I've seen the first time around, with different wolves mingling and chatting. There's plenty to chat about, that's for sure. Take idle sips of wine, discreetly paying attention to what's being said at the nearby tables. Everyone's very much on edge and concerned that a war might be coming, but whom they would fight seems as confusing to them as it is to me. The common themes seem to be a reluctance to openly battle with their own light with their own kin, although very few appear willing to forgo transgressions committed by their northern neighbors. The elders also took notice of the conversations and decided to take rounds between the various tables, talking to prominent tribeswolves with the aim to most likely sway their opinions. Somewhere in this commotion, Vithyr disappeared, most likely to find his daughter and ensure she's out of harm's way, fearing another spat with the elders. I really hate those old farts. Their behavior leaves very little doubt about how rotten they truly are. And before long, I have another proof, almost as if in the universe tried to almost as if the universe tried to mock me. Aldris, the fat bitch, begins storming towards the table, clearly stomping in my direction. She pushes her mug in my face while poking a nail harshly in the shoulder, stirring the old female from another one of her naps. Do you intend to simply vegetate here? Maybe you'd join the discussion. It's worded more like a demand than a suggestion, and I frown, leaning slightly to the side of the cup as I still very much in my face. Uh, oh, no! I think I've had enough excitement for one night. I I'll just stay where I am, thank you. Ugh, what is the point of even dragging you here? Aldra sneers and looks at me with anger. She pivots around the table and grabs my wrist, shaking me to and fro. Why, you damned moron, I haven't got all night! At first I'm startled, but my anger finally kicks in. I decide there and then not to dance or tune over again. I simply sit there, looking at her with a puzzled expression. I'm a dumb ape, after all. That human has all the makings of an idiot! But my little gambit is about to turn sour as the female loses her patience and lifts her arms with clear intent to hit me. I'll teach you some obedience. What are you doing? 
Regera arrives in the nick of time, calling out in both shock and anger and causing the elder female to reconsider. You would strike a guest at a dinner table? Her voice carries an oddly serious tone. Even Anel is quite surprised. Surely you wouldn't. The frail female adds in a worried tone. Wait, violating hospitality rights is a serious crime. It would even make our, your father roll in his grave. He's not a guest! Aldris protests through a growl, but the towering female does not let up and moves in closer to square off with that vile woman. The chief declared him so, and as far as I'm aware, his word is the law. All the damn bunnies have bolted somewhere. How else am I supposed to get a refill? As she says so, I cast my gaze around, and true to her statement, there is no attendee to be seen in sight. I guess they've used the recess to talk among themselves. After all, the issue relates to them as much as it does to the wolves. You're not a cripple. Fetch your own damned wine. I managed just fine, and I've just returned from battle. With barely a scrape. Still more than you still more than you've ever experienced. Listen here, you overgrown bitch. Fuck, I can't believe Granny's missing all this. The black wolf throws in indif throws in indifferently, taking a prolonged and very slurpy sip of his ale. She always loved good gossip. Bringing her up to speed about this circus we should prove entertaining. And again, as if it were a magic spell, the sheer mention of her sister causes Aldris to fall silent, and the female fidgets uncomfortably. Who's your grandma? Pray tell, you look mighty familiar. Anel gives Vul a careful look, almost as if she saw him for the first time. She's she's your friend, Anel. My friend? Oh, what joyous news. The frail female clasps her paws in pure bliss. I thought all my friends were long gone. Fortunately, not all of them. Just the shits that stick around and stink up the place. The comment clearly annoys Aldris. I can tell by her tightening grip on my arm and I groan in pain. This is going to leave another mark. The monkey won't serve. Pass me the bottle at the very least. Budgie female throws demanding throws throws demandingly at Vul, and the wolf scoffs. Fuck no, I'm not your damn waiter. This is our wine. You can fetch your drink from the common tables. Enraged, Aldris lets go of my arm and shoves it away, pointing her sausage-like fingers at the towering female. Now listen here and listen well. Oh, you can have my cup, dearie. And now interjects, offering the chalice to the nasty bitch in her shaky paws. You should save you the trouble. Aldris veers around the table and snatches the cup with a subdued growl, storming off and grumbling under her breath. Bunch of soft wolves infatuated with a stunted mongrel. You're welcome. The frail female mutters, and a sigh and a sigh heavily, really thankful to be surrounded with the kind and assertive wolves who look out for me. I get up from my spot and go behind the pavilion. There, as I suspect, that I find a side cupboard from which I fetch one of the clean one of the clean cups. When I return to the table, I nod for the wine bottle, which is slightly out of my reach, and Regera gives it to me with a gentle smile. I fill up a replacement cup for Anel and pass it to her. She takes it with a gentle nod and a kind smile, but before she can say a thing, I can hear Aldris angered shouting from afar. Had it been a wolf, one would have thought it'd be it's doing it on purpose! The female snarls in my direction, and I snort discreetly, shrugging it off and returning to my spot. Now that there's only us at the table, I take a discreet glance at Tano, who's been quiet throughout the entire feast so far. Not sure if he's fuming over a surrendered seat or simply hatching another plan to torment me. He seems very focused and agitated, as he's mostly playing with his knife, chiseling something nervously into the side of the table. He's only quiet for his usual self, but my attention is quickly drawn to the overgrown female. Despite Anel softly snoozing against, against, again between them, Regera takes this opportunity to lean towards the black wolf. So, <clears throat> so, since I no longer have a mate, I guess this means I'm back on the market. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Fool gonna get laid, probably. Fool's probably fucking scared of her. She's she's huge. <laughs> she's a big girl. She's thick. She's strong. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.